on this edition of the program. Biden's age back in the news in good and bad ways. On one hand, he's got a new commercial, $30 million behind it. We're going to break down every second of it. And I'm with her. Special prosecutor talks to Congress. Tom Merritt joins the program to talk TikTok. Will it get banned? Find out. We begin now. Hello and welcome, everybody, to the Politics, Politics, Politics program for March 13th, 2024. Your old pal Justin Robert Young joining you on the program here in central texas getting a little rainy here you know april showers starting a little bit early as it is wont to do in austin and and trust me we need it we've had some really 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 brutal summers and hopefully they can be a little a little more uh moist it's hard to say that depending on when you're listening to this Probably ever. People really don't like that term. Let's go ahead and get on in to the meat of what we want to talk about. And that is Joe Biden's age. He's old, friends. Uh, He is the oldest person to win election to the presidency, and he hopes to beat his own record this November. So we're going to start with the bad, and then we're going to get to the good. Although both are, you know, up to you. Salt to taste. First is Robert Herb. Robert Herb is a special prosecutor that was looking in to whether or not Joe Biden committed a crime when he took classified documents from his position as both a senator and a vice president and kept them in not only his house, but also various offices that he had. As you might remember, the Biden administration was none too pleased With the report, the results they loved. That is that Joe Biden did not commit a crime, according to this particular prosecutor. Or at least he did not commit a crime that the prosecutor believed he would be able to get a conviction on. Ah, therein lies the rub. And the reason why the Biden administration was so upset, that is the way that her insinuated Biden would not be able to be convicted. And that is that he was a, and I quote, kindly old man with a bad memory. Obviously, with the election coming up and Biden's age front and center, this became an issue. And in my opinion, as I told you on this show, there was an unforced error by the Biden administration slash campaign. And that was, they got mad about it. Sometimes you have to answer that age-old question from American film classic, Dust Till Dawn. Are you so much of a loser that you can't realize when you've won? The Biden administration got what they wanted, a clear line of the sand, why they were different than Donald Trump. Donald Trump did commit a crime with what he did in Mar-a-Lago, according to a registered Republican prosecutor in Robert Herr. And Joe Biden did no such thing. But, you know, politicians, not the thickest of skin. Joe Biden comes out and has a press conference wherein he mistakes El Sisi to be the president of Mexico and not Egypt. Oh, no, no. And so... Republicans pounce, as they also are wont to do. And Robert Herr was speaking to Congress today. I did not see all of it, but I do have enough of the notes from the top uh, hour of his testimony. First, the congressional Democrats seem to have taken my advice and, well, taken the win. And by the way, when you are relying on Jerry Nadler and Jamie Raskin to be the patient ones, you have a general sense that maybe there should be a little bit more woo when it comes to the Biden administration. In general, those congressional Democrats that spoke to her kept drawing one line in the sand. So you're saying there was no crime? Cool. No crime? No crime. 
If you were to put your findings into a two-word sentence that started with no and ended with crime, would it be no crime? Thank you very much. I cede my time. That was, except for Representative Hank Johnson of Georgia, who did what you might have expected the Democrats were going to do when Joe Biden first got mad about this. And that is smear Robert Hur as a registered Republican, a disciple of the Federalist Society, and out and out trying to swing the election for President Donald Trump so Hur might advance his own career. It was notable because it was different than the tenor of the other Democrats that were questioning him. So, you know, the house gonna house. The Republicans, on the other hand, were mostly driving toward a double standard argument. They generally agreed that Joe Biden probably should not have been charged based on precedent previous to the Mar-a-Lago case, but that since the Mar-a-Lago case happened, then her should have charged him. Which kind of brought up maybe the most surprising thing about this, that Biden's memory was largely sidelined. You know, there were a few pointed exchanges. Representative Matt Gates uh, used the term senile and said that because Joe Biden doesn't have an elevator that can go to the top floor. He wound up avoiding any kind of legal entanglement. But it wasn't quite the Joe Biden's memory on trial spectacle that some might have thought. And the reason why is because of the State of the Union. A State of the Union that increasingly both sides think they totally won. The Democrats were rapturous. The media could not stop clapping and chanting, come back, kid, come back, kid. And the Republicans got their moment. That was Marjorie Taylor Greene effectively bullying Joe Biden into talking about Lakin Riley and Joe Biden taking the bait. Mispronouncing Lakin's name as Lincoln, the coach of the University of Southern California football team, and then calling the murderer of Lake and Ryland, uh, Lake and Riley. See, I shouldn't have criticized Biden. The murderer of Lake and Riley, an illegal. For the record, go back and listen to that clip. Joe Biden was just repeating what Marjorie Taylor Greene said. Now, Joe Biden was raked over the coals by his left flank for using the term illegal. I don't know how many signs you need to put out front of your house to say that in this house we believe science is real and no human is illegal. But Joe Biden did make amends on MSNBC saying that he should have said undocumented immigrant and pointing out that immigrants built this country. That, of course, is further fuel for the Republicans who make hay that Joe Biden is apologizing for being impolite with an accused murderer. So everybody feels like they're willing to fight on or willing to to let this go. They kind of feel like they are at a position that they want to be at when it comes to Biden's age. By the way, CNN poll showed that despite the reaction on Twitter and among certain liberal substacks, the American public did not like that State of the Union. It was the lowest rated in the last 40 years, at least according to the CNN poll that has consistently asked that question. Does it matter? Probably not. State of the Unions don't normally matter. But we do know that the Biden administration is taking the age question seriously. And so there's $30 million worth of money going into an ad that we are about to play. We're going to break down that ad. Before we get out of this her situation, though, to coincide with the testimony, the Washington Post got a hold of the transcript of the interview between her and Biden. This was hours of questioning 
from the Department of Justice to Joseph Robinette Biden Jr. I would encourage you to go read the full Washington Post story. We're not going to go over everything. Uh, The top line in terms of actual news is that Joe Biden was probably being a little bit overly defensive in that same press conference that he got El Sisi's name wrong when he said he was mostly offended that her would ask him about Bo Biden because it was Joe that brought up Bo's death and her immediately said uh, uh, all apologies for it. That being said, there are elements of this transcript that, to be totally honest with you, If you're the Biden campaign, you want to put out there more, including this moment. I'm going to read directly from the post. At times during the interview, according to the transcript, the president made noises like a car. Once it was while lamenting that he could drive his vintage Chevrolet Corvette only the length of his driveway. The other time was during a lengthy exchange over the torque of electric vehicles. By the way, you know how that works? Biden asked her. It's really cool, her remarks. Sir, uh, I'd love, I would love to hear much more about this, but I do have a few more questions to get through. Biden interrupts. You step your foot on the accelerator all the way down until it gets to about six, seven grand, Biden continues. Then all of a sudden it will say launch. And all you do is take the foot off the brake. The transcript, the transcript then indicates, and I'm going to, do my best to make this as clear as possible in an audio format. Quote, parenthetical, makes car sound, as well as, quote, parenthetical, laughter. Joe Biden's cutting jokes. Well, he is, and he starts with a joke in this commercial. This is uh, called For You, it is uh, the first big ad spend for Biden-Harris 2024. Let's go ahead and play it now. Look, I'm not a young guy. That's no secret. But here's the deal. I understand how to get things done for the American people. I led the country through the COVID crisis. Today, we have the strongest economy in the world. I passed a law that lowers prescription drug prices, caps insulin of $35 a month for seniors. For four years, Donald Trump tried to pass an infrastructure law, and he failed. I got it done. Now we're rebuilding America. I passed the biggest law in history to combat climate change because our future depends on it. Donald Trump took away the freedom of women to choose. I'm determined to make Roe v. Wade the law of the land again. Donald Trump believes the job of the president is to take care of Donald Trump. I believe the job of the president is to fight for you, the American people, and that's what I'm doing. I'm Joe Biden, and I approve this message. Can we do one more take? Look, I'm very young, energetic, and handsome. What the hell am I doing this for? All right, all right. So obviously a playful tone here. Let's break it down. First things first, address and dismiss. This is classic in marketing. This is classic in advertising. This is classic in politics. You know your weakness. Don't run away from it. Paint it red. Move forward. So that way, at the very least, you know that you are not hiding from it. It is not something that is being whispered behind your back. And so we get this first line that I can't imagine, you know, how much the the first line was debated. But, But one more time, here is the first couple seconds of this. Look, I'm not a young guy. That's no secret. But here's the deal. I understand how to get things done for the American people. I'm old, but I'm useful. And then we go in through what you would, ugh, God, you can, you can just, you, you could see it coming from a mile away with Joe Biden. He's going to focus like LBJ on legislative, legislative, legislative. This is no longer so. So uh, compare this to when he was running against Donald Trump in 2020. Soul of the nation. It was vibes. We are skidding off the path. We need to regain what we once had. Let's eject this Visigoth from our throne and replace good old fashioned American political values back to Washington, D.C. 
Now he's got a record, and unlike Donald Trump, who still wanted to run on the idea of keeping America great, Joe Biden says, here's what I did, here's what I did. Led through the COVID crisis. He built, uh, uh, he capped insulin. Uh, And by the way, I've had this thing with Joe Biden where sometimes with his, even his recorded uh, stuff, I I wonder like, wow, really? That was the best take he got? In general, his voice is really, really good in this ad, except for Cap's insulin. We still get a little slur. I don't know if this is me being psychotic or if other people hear this, but just so you know. It lowers prescription drug prices. Cap's insulin is $35 a month for seniors. Look, maybe I'm nuts. It's just something that I hear. For four years, Donald Trump tried to pass an infrastructure law, and he failed. I got it done. Now we're rebuilding America. I passed the biggest. Okay. So infrastructure. I don't know how much actual Americans followed the it's infrastructure week meme amongst the media on Twitter. If you're unfamiliar with it, the Trump administration tried to signal that they were going to push for infrastructure a bunch of different times. And so it's infrastructure week kind of became like it's groundhog day. It it just keeps happening over and over and over and over again. I believe infrastructure is something that you should brag about. It tends to not be the political winner that we might want it to be. But, you know, it is what it is. Here's something else that's funny. Uh, I'm going to play you this line right here. And see if you can tell me what's what's funny about it. The biggest law in history to combat climate change because our future depends on it. You want to know what that bill is? That's the Inflation Reduction Act. So he didn't pass the biggest bill so we could reduce inflation, which is, you know, the only way that that bill got passed was by saying that it was going to actually do something about a thing that people cared about. He said he passed the biggest green energy law, which... To be fair, he's not wrong. It is what it is. But it is interesting that they couldn't pass it like that. But now they are going to campaign on that. Donald Trump took away the freedom of women to choose. I'm determined to make Roe v. Wade the law of the land again. Donald Trump believes the job of the president. So, all right, before we get into the the, the big finish here, we're going to find out by the end of this election whether or not I am right or wrong on the idea that saying we're going to make Roe versus Wade the law of the land again is good or bad politics. I don't think it's great politics. I think it's saying the exact same message that you said before. You got into this situation. You got to think of a new message here. Uh, It just can't be the exact same thing. That being said, it is interesting from my perspective that that is 30, it's past the halfway mark of this ad. It's a minute long ad. We got past infrastructure. We got past capping insulin. We got past everything else that we already talked about before we got to a women's right to choose. And what I would say, if I were working in democratic politics, women's health, women's health is under attack. And only I can fix it. I think that there's there is room for him to do that, but it's interesting that 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 we wait until halfway through this ad before we get to that. Let's do the big finish here. This is the Trump comparison. Truth. I'm determined to make Roe v. Wade the law of the land again. Donald Trump believes the job of the president is to take care of Donald Trump. I believe the job of the president is to fight for you. The American people, and that's what I'm doing. I'm Joe Biden, and I approve this message. All right. This contest is going to be between two people that will paint the other one as being out of touch with the average American. All right? That's that's just going to happen. And so you're seeing Joe Biden saying, look, I've been a populist candidate from the very beginning. I'm at my best when I am uh, uh, rubbing elbows 
with a bunch of people at a church bingo in Scranton. That's when I come alive. Yeah, I'm fine inside the halls of the Senate, but but that's what I like doing. I like retail politics. I like going to union halls. That's my thing. So he's not going to give that up, nor do I think that he should. But it is interesting when his opponent is somebody that's going to define himself as more of a populist than he is. All right. Let's get to the to 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 the the end cap here. We are 8 seconds left in this ad. We need to show that vroom vroom car noise part of Biden. That goofy part of Biden. The relatable, the likable part of Biden. Here we go. Can we do one more take? Look, I'm very young, energetic, and handsome. What the hell am I doing this for? So, outtake. He's making a joke. The final image of this is Joe Biden smiling as he uh, is in half focus walking off camera. This campaign is funded by $30 million in TV and digital advertisements. And uh, it is going to uh, accompany a Biden tour in Pennsylvania and Georgia. It will also air uh, during uh, the March Madness tournament, the college basketball tournaments, actually, in, uh, you know, coming up here in the next few weeks, which there's a lot of ads on those. And by the way, I say tournaments because the two biggest stars in college basketball this year are women. There are no two collegiate basketball players that have more star power right now than Caitlin Clark and Angel Reese. Yeah, it's odd. It's interesting. You know, maybe I would have put Roe versus Wade earlier. Maybe. I don't know. This is your update f- uh, brought to you by TakePoliticsSeriously.com. Again, TakePoliticsSeriously.com is where you need to go. If you would like to get two bonus episodes of this podcast each and every week. Oh, yeah. And, and now uh, we're doing video versions of this podcast. And you might think, oh, okay. All right. All right. All right. All right. If I get the bonus podcast, they're going to be audio only. I've been I've been watching these video versions. I can see your lovely face and your dignified mustache, but I only get audio only versions of the uh, of of the bonus episodes. And and if that is what your thought process is, number one, thank you for considering coming on. TakePoliticsSeriously.com. Join at the three dollar level for the price of a cup of coffee. You get two bonus episodes each and every week. But you're wrong. You're dead wrong. You're absolutely wrong because, you know, we get the the video versions actually started coming first for the patrons. Our Sunday, Sunday, Sunday edition, where we go over all the clips from the the Sunday shows, those were in video version before anything that we did on this show. I'm just saying. It's a good time. Take politics seriously. Dot com is where you need to go. But let's go ahead and get to the stories we didn't get a chance to get to. The U.S. House is poised for a bipartisan vote to potentially ban TikTok by requiring ByteDance, its parent company, to divest its stake in the app. The Protecting Americans from Foreign Adversaries Controlled Applications Act aims to address national security concerns but faces significant opposition especially from TikTok users and some political figures. Despite unanimous support from the House Energy and Commerce Committee, the bill's future in the Senate is uncertain, with bipartisan resistance and a preference for alternative approaches to regulate foreign apps. In the Senate, objections from both parties suggest a complicated path forward. Senator Rand Paul's insistence on a roll call vote alongside Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer's noncommittal stance. Old anti-China Chuck. Pumping the brakes a little bit. As well as Senator 
Maria Cantwell's preference for the Guard Act, highlighting the legislative challenges on that end. The Guard Act proposes regulation without outright banning of TikTok. Senators have criticized the bill's specificity toward TikTok, suggesting a broader approach to social media regulation. So we're going to spend a lot of time in our interview coming up right after this, talking with Tom Merritt about this particular subject. So I'll save most of my opinions for that. Here are the updates uh, that happened after we recorded. Marjorie Taylor Greene, obviously one of the loudest and most animated voices in the House, says that she is probably not going to vote for this. The vote will happen on Wednesday, likely when you are listening to this. So keep an eye on it. But the path looks rocky through the Senate. Former President Donald Trump announced his support for former Representative Mike Rogers in the Michigan Senate race, significantly bolstering Rogers' position as the primary frontrunner. Trump's endorsement shared on social media emphasizes Rogers' extensive career from the Army to Congress and his commitment to America First policies. Rogers' candidacy is part of a broader strategy by Trump and Senator Steve Daines, chair of the National Republican Senatorial Committee, to align primary candidates with their political objectives, including supporting Tim Sheehy in Montana, which led Representative Matt Rosendale to not only not run for Senate, but he's not running for his seat in the House now either. Rogers' leadership and popularity were evident in late February when a survey showed him leading his closest competitor on the Republican side by 16 percentage points. His candidacy comes a, after years of encouragement from national Republicans and at a time when former Representative Justin Amash, an independent and critic of Trump, has also entered the race. The Republicans are beginning to array peace between the houses of Trump and McConnell, peace between the houses of Trump and Club for Growth, we are all but the kind of Nikki Haley, never Trump contingent away from the Republicans really being on the same page here. And it's an element of coalition building that we really haven't seen from the emperor of MAGA nation. And finally, speaking of hegemony, Donald Trump's leadership team at the Republican National Committee has initiated a significant restructuring, aiming to streamline operations by dismissing over 60 staff members across various departments, including political, communications, and data. This move, signaled by a letter from Sean Cairncross, the RNC's new chief operating officer, reflects an effort to align the organization more closely with the Trump campaign. The changes, which also involve cutting some vendor contracts, include the departure of five senior staff members, including uh, although their identities were not disclosed at this time. The reorganization occurs as Trump's campaign takes full operational control of the RNC with endorsements leading to the election of Michael Watley as the new chair, Laura Trump as co-chair. Chris Lasavita has also been appointed as the RNC's new chief of staff. Lasavita uh, coming directly from the Trump campaign, the head of the Trump campaign. These changes mark a departure from the tenure of Ronna McDaniel, who had been a long-term ally of Trump, but faced criticism over issues of voter integrity and the housing of Republican primary debates. Trump's team criticizes the RNC's previous structure for being too bureaucratic and contributing to financial difficulties, comparing its $8 million in funds unfavorably to the Democratic National Committee. The overhaul signifies that there are changes in the offing. And look, there's a couple ways that you're going to see this portrayed. In some media, it's going to be portrayed as Donald Trump tearing down the RNC to make it in his own image. That certainly was something that Nikki Haley talked a lot about, and that will be repeated a lot amongst uh, um, you know more liberal-minded uh, commentators. The reality is this happens all the time. So that's largely overblown. But what hasn't been reported a lot and that you'd really have to pay attention to conservative media to pay attention to is that the RNC, what really precipitated Ronna McDaniel getting the old he fo was some reporting that came out of Red State by uh, Jennifer Van Lahr showing that there had been tremendous mismanaging of funds within the RNC with, you know, budget lines that had the same number in it for things like flowers and fruit arrays as it did for get out the vote drives. 
if the Republican National Committee should be there for anything, it should be managing and targeting data for voters and not making sure that you get the melon free fruit array, at least in my opinion. So while we don't know if the people that are coming in will be more competent than the ones that are leaving, from my perspective on the outside, it's not that much of a surprise that people are exiting stage left. That's your update. TakePoliticsSeriously.com is where you need to go to get two bonus episodes each and every week. Now, time for Tom Merritt. Joining me now, our official tech correspondent and British political correspondent, <laughs> Tom Merritt. Welcome back to the show, Tom. Uh, thank you for having me back, Justin. Uh, of course, the host of Daily Tech News Show and the author of a new book. Before we even begin, tell us about... This you are a prolific author, but it's usually fiction that you write. This is uh, actually on the thing that you talk about every single day <laughs> of your life, which I think is a bold business decision. But yeah. tell us about the new book. Yeah, a uh, friend of the show, our, our fellow uh, co uh, friend uh, Will Harris is CEO of a company called Unbound, uh, and he was like, "Hey, do you do you want to write a book for Unbound?" Uh, you know, you you do technology, Tom. You could probably yeah. write a pretty decent book about technology. Yeah. I was like, well, that's why you're the CEO. Um, <laughs> so yeah, uh, I the book is called Synced, Understand Technology and Make It Work for You. Uh, taking a lot of the work that I do on Know a Little More, uh, an, a podcast of mine, a ton of the work that we do for Daily Tech News Show, and making it available on your bookshelf. So if you want to be like, wait, what? What was that thing about AI, or what really makes TikTok work, or you know, what, what, what is this or that question about technology? It's all available uh, in book form. And the way Unbound works uh, is they do pre-orders before yeah. publication is set. So it's not exactly Kickstarter because it's not like make or break, but you want to get all the funding in place before you set the publication date. So uh, we're out there trying to get people to sign up and back the book. Uh, please do everybody listening. Uh, I did uh, over the weekend. Thank you. And uh, uh, yeah, just, it is in pounds. That's, that's the one Cause it's thing. It's a British company. Yeah. Cause it's a British company. Uh, there's nothing they can do about it. They're, they're going to be British no matter how hard you try. So, uh, just understand it's, uh, slightly more in dollars. That's my official financial advice. <laughs> Go back Tom's book. Uh, uh, where can people find it again? Uh, well, thanks to you, I have tomsnewbook.com. You gave me this idea years ago. Uh, and so whenever I have a new book, I just point Tom's new book at it. So go to tomsnewbook.com and it should show right up. Look at that. Look at that. You'll love to see it. All right. Well, let's talk about the issue at hand. Now, we often, I'll have you on the show whenever uh, we get a chance, but there is a legit intersection between tech and politics, and that is a bipartisan bill that the president of the United States, Joe Biden, has said he would sign, should it pass Congress, to do what with TikTok? Because <laughs> there's a lot of words. There's banning. There's divesting. It, it's a little bit of both, right? Yeah, yeah. So uh, the shorthand descriptions are all banned, and, and they're not necessarily wrong. The bill itself uh, would prohibit providing services to distribute, maintain, or update a foreign adversary controlled application, uh, as well as prohibiting providing internet hosting services for a foreign adversary controlled application. So basically saying you can't host it in your app store to people in the United States. Yeah. Uh, and you can't host a website for it for people in the United States. Uh, the really fun thing about this bill is that it defines foreign adversary controlled application as ByteDance, <laughs> like it names yes. ByteDance and TikTok, like a foreign adversary controlled application includes ByteDance or TikTok or any of its variations or something that the president might someday decide to include in case we want to add somebody else to the list. And that and that brings in some of the implications, which let, let's go ahead and, and discuss the specifics of this bill before we get into kind of the, the overarching element of it. Uh, that is the hammer, but the out would be something that has been on and off called for through various elements of government, uh, some more serious than others, which is for ByteDance, which is, as 
ties to China uh, to sell TikTok to an American company. Yeah, so the the provision is kind of a grace period. Like you, yes, you basically uh, say, and I assume this kicks in if this were to become law. the The day it goes into effect, clock starts ticking, and ByteDance has five months to divest itself, which yeah. basically means sell the U.S. version of TikTok. Uh, if that sounds familiar, it's exactly the same thing as when President Trump signed an executive order ordering ByteDance to divest itself of the U.S. version of TikTok. And that led to negotiations with Oracle, which have continued and now are TikTok shield whenever they have been called before Congress to say, we have Operation Texas or Project Texas, sorry. Project Texas, Pro yeah. Project Texas that will work with Oracle to keep American data in America. Why hasn't that seemed to please the people that now on both sides of the aisle want the harsher version of this. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, so to connect the dots for everybody, uh, the executive order said they had to sell, but then the courts said, we don't think an executive order can make them sell. Uh, and it all ended up after a nice little do -si do with, well, what if we agree to keep all of the data for TikTok, not only in the United States, but controlled by a separate company and the board of directors from this company can be the U.S. Committee on Foreign Investment. Uh, yeah. TikTok US remains owned by ByteDance, but all the data is under control of this separate company, and that separate company uh, handles data requests and algorithm updates and everything as basically a contractor for TikTok. Uh, in January, there was an article, uh, both the Wall Street Journal and I believe the Information uh, did articles about weaknesses in that system. So the Oracle run data center is up and running. Oracle has full access to TikTok source code uh, and the algorithm for the U.S. version. But the problem isn't nefarious Communist Party intrusions into that company. Uh, the problem is it's a contractor. And like any contractor, it doesn't have full access to everything that the main company has. So a lot of times they have a problem keeping up. Because they have yeah. to replicate all the work that happens on TikTok and the rest of the world. They, if a new algorithm comes along, they have to re-implement it on the Oracle servers. And a lot of times when that happens, people take shortcuts. And occasionally some of those shortcuts are, uh, why don't you call up uh, Ken in Singapore and have him yeah. look at this? And Ken goes, well, I'm going to ask uh, 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 Ming Hao in <laughs> Beijing to look at this. Yeah. And suddenly you've got a trail of, ah, well, that user data was seen by somebody in China and that wasn't supposed to happen. It doesn't seem like it happens on a regular basis, but it was happening. There was evidence of that happening. That raised a few alarm bells. Then I think the other thing, is more speculative, but seems to be the proximate uh, rise of conversation on TikTok about the situation in Israel and Palestine turned a few heads and got people paying attention again. And that's one of the, you know, obviously, whenever you're dealing with an algorithm that's as fluid as TikToks, where if, if you have never been on the platform, it, the main way that you interact with it is not similar to any social media that we have had where it's very easy to pick and choose through a menu, but you press a button and it starts playing. TikTok is an immediate waterfall of, uh, uh, of, of videos, currently playing videos, and it will learn your preferences to give you more of what you want theoretically. Or if you want to look at it from another perspective, it will make sure that it gives the most uh, a di uh, uh, diabolical uh, 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 culture ripping content that will get these youths wild with anger against, uh, you know, themselves and, and America in general. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and so that, that, that's got a lot of people deciding that thumbs are on scales. Yeah. Uh, and then looking at this January report and saying, well, look, uh, people in China are still seeing the data. Uh, even though they're sort of not really seeing the data on a regular basis. And really they're only seeing the data because of the restrictions on the data. Uh, oddly enough, uh, there's rules that say you can't save code to your own laptop uh, to, to work on it. 
And so people are finding other shortcuts and sometimes yeah. those shortcuts leak out data. Uh, and, and so my opinion on this is that this has almost nothing to do with technology. They, they have le leaped through all of the technical hurdles to wall off the data as much as they can. Uh, it, it doesn't even have much to do with personal behavior, which is what the so-called leaks that were reported in January are. It really just has to do with politics. It has to do with, I think I can win some votes by being against TikTok. I'm going to lose some votes maybe or, or upset you know some folks in one demo, but I'm going to gain them in another demo. How Chinese is TikTok? <laughs> uh, that, that's a silly question uh, because it, what you're asking is how Chinese Communist Party is it, right? Uh, I, I, the, I imagine, look, uh, 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 number one, I'm playing dumb. No, uh, but also, like, uh, uh, that's the question. Right. Because when, when, you, when you are listening like, to the conversations. But like how Chinese is Taiwan? How Chinese is Singapore? How Chinese well, that, is Chinatown? Talk, talking, right? talk, talk, talking like that about Taiwan, and we're going to get in some serious trouble here. <laughs> it was a question, not a statement, right? Because I would love to visit someday. Uh, yes. Yeah. No, it's, it, it's how much of TikTok is part of China. And, the, and, and the, my answer is uh, ByteDance is as influenced by the Chinese Communist Party and the government of China as every other Chinese company. Uh, TikTok is actually even probably slightly less because it's headquartered in Singapore, uh, because TikTok US is headquartered in Santa Monica. So there's a few speed bumps in the road. But yeah, ByteDance was founded in Beijing uh, and it's got operations in Beijing. And like every company that operates in China, Apple, Microsoft, Lenovo, it's subject to the rules of, of the Chinese uh, of, of the Chinese government. Uh, and for some reason, TikTok seems to garner a lot more scrutiny than a lot of other operations. Uh, now, Microsoft uh, very clearly is not under the thumb of the Chinese Communist Party, and nobody thinks they are. But what about Lenovo? Lenovo is in very similar situation to TikTok, where it's got a headquarters in China. Microsoft doesn't have a headquarters in China. It has an office yeah. in China. Lenovo has a headquarters in China and a headquarters in North Carolina. So it's the same as TikTok, where they've got a headquarters in Santa Monica, they've got a headquarters in Singapore, uh, and, and they've got a presence on mainland China. Uh, to me, you should be as worried about Lenovo laptops as you are about TikTok laptop, uh, TikTok's data, which is to say maybe slightly keeping an eye on it, but not particularly worried. This is because where was ByteDance founded, though? ByteDance was, I think it was started in mainland China yes. and then moved the headquarters to Singapore. To, to, to Singapore. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. But, but they do still have, I mean, because they Lenovo offer. And Lenovo was started in mainland China. That's my, why I use that example. Yeah. Started yeah. in mainland okay. China and then it acquired ThinkPad from IBM and got its North Carolina. ByteDance was started in mainland China, acquired Musical.ly, which was located in San Francisco. Yes. I, loc yeah. And that's, that's really where this kind of becomes you know, sets us on the track. That and TikTok becoming wildly popular, where yes. we have these very, very interesting situations, like President Biden saying that he would sign this ban while banning TikTok from all government phones and starting a TikTok within the last two <laughs> months and, uh, uh, you know, doing yeah. rapid response videos on there. And, and a bipartisan effort on this bill that is unseen in this Congress that can't do anything else. Yeah. Now, whether it will pass is another question, because somebody that has already scuttled le le legislation in this Congress, Donald Trump, the guy who originally had the executive order to ban it, came out two days ago and said, eh, don't ban it. It's just going to benefit Facebook. Did he say don't ban it or yeah. did he say did he say those words, though? That's the part I didn't see. I thought he said, if you ban TikTok, Facebook wins, and I don't want Facebook to win, or words to that effect. Uh, he clarified, yeah, I, I, I don't have the truth uh, social, social in front of either. me, yeah. uh, but it has been a fairly consistent messaging from them that they are 
uh, uh, they don't want Facebook to win, and yeah. so therefore it should not be it 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 should not be banned. And I th- I think that's the key there. Uh, first of all, uh, I, Justin and I were going back and forth on on whether it's plus ten or plus twelve hypocrisy defense that President Trump has, <laughs> uh, but he'll change his mind when he's ready to change his mind, and none of this will matter. But at the same time, what he's saying is I don't want Facebook to win, so I'm against it right now. That doesn't mean he'll change his mind later. I don't think it's entirely substantive he, that he's he come said, out against it. He he said on CNBC this morning that it is a national security threat and it is something that he would exactly. he would he would uh, do something with. But look, but uh, the momentum for this bill right now, and and we have been, well, I, I have said on a Daily Tech News show that this is a a perfect storm situation for for TikTok in a bad way because mm. right now. There is bipartisan anger toward social media. On the right, it is very, very dialed in on TikTok. And you've seen a lot of the like Twitter files and Google files and Facebook files of interactions between uh, what is looked at as a liberal leaning permanent bureaucratic class or a national intelligence class that has interacted with these companies and negatively impacted conservatives on their side. And then you've got this very, very popular and rising uh, uh, element of more liberal-leaning politicians that are pointing out that these companies are maybe negative toward the health, specifically toward children or teenagers, and TikTok is their app of choice, much in the same way that Twitter and Facebook were two generations before them. Yeah, and I look at this and I see very little actual evidence of a security concern. I know uh, National Security Council folks briefed a lot of the members of Congress about this before they they wrote the bill, but it doesn't seem like TikTok has a higher security threat than a lot of other things. And in fact, it's probably less of a security threat than some data brokers out there who are selling your data to absolutely everyone. We can go into that if you want to, but yeah. this does feel like it's more of a situation where you know that your younger voters are going to get upset about this. Uh, they're also less likely to show up at yeah, the polls. They don't, they don't vote. So, so who cares? <laughs> uh, what you're going to gain in older voters going, well, I'm happy they're finally something doing something about that. TikTok is worth it. Uh, that's why the house is fully on board across the aisle on this. It does seem like the Senate isn't entirely no. on board they're very no. very lukewarm in all of their comments they haven't said they're against it but they're like well we need to look at it uh we got to see if it's constitutional etc cetera, etc cetera. so my guess i don't know you tell me because this is straying into your your area of expertise mm-hmm. i don't think this thing gets out of the senate i don't think so either unless something happens okay you know, remember, we're always one whistleblower away sure. from from this getting a lot of momentum. And, and I think that there is a reason why TikTok is, you know, they're they're pulling out the big guns. They're they're directly weaponizing their users to call their Congress people like uh, when you know, the only way that this gets more aggressive from the TikTok side, aside from spending money on lobbyists and doing that kind of stuff is that you just make it a mandatory click through when you go to TikTok that you like <laughs> yeah, call your congressman that, yeah. right now or right. else we're not going to show you the videos that Which we have lined up. A lot up. of people thought they were doing because they didn't know how to get past the pop up, <laughs> but that, that wasn't actually happening. Yeah, but it's like, but my, my point is that that is a pretty heavy hand for them. So it seems like TikTok does believe this is a serious, serious threat to their, to their existence. They are treating it like that. Yeah. Uh, I tend to think that there's going to need to be another news peg for this to be a a, a thing. You know, you need a face of somebody that comes out and says, I was the mule for Beijing. And uh, uh, I know for a fact that the CEO, every time he got up and very, very confidently said, look, I'm from Singapore, I have nothing to do with the Chinese Communist Party, uh, that he was lying. He was knowingly lying. If something like that happens, then yeah, I think that there's a there's a serious chance of this, that, that, that TikTok would be toast. Aside from that, you know, uh, it, in, th- there's more anger 
about it on the House side than there is the Senate side. And I don't know if nothing happens in the Senate if Chuck Schumer doesn't want it to happen. And I don't know if Chuck Schumer is ready to be the guy that kills TikTok. Even Lindsey Graham's Luke on it. Yeah. Well, he can't go to war with it, which is, yeah. you know, that's that's his thing. Not yet. Like, I don't know. Can I deploy troops to TikTok? No. <laughs> I can't. Let me know huh. when I can. And can then I deploy I'll be troops anywhere it. else because of t- no? Okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. I. I I, I I wonder I kind of wonder where it goes because I, I do think that regardless of whether or not this is the moment, I do think that and I've said this for a year now, a, a moment's coming. Something more will happen gover- governmentally with TikTok for no other reason than the only thing that I can really analogize it to in my own life would be if they were looking to ban MTV when I was 13, 14, Mm -hmm. you know, it was a primary way that I connected with my peers. It was a primary way that I uh, had social and uh, uh, understanding um, of of the world in many ways. It's where I heard about big, gigantic world events oftentimes. But that was owned by Viacom, right? (laughs) That wasn't owned. That wasn't owned by a company that has, like you said, uh, uh, you know, founded in mainland China and the, the rules of the road in terms of businesses in China are different than they are in, in America, you yeah. know, I, and that, that definitely changes the playing field of let's see if we can get something on TikTok and whip up further fervor. I, I do want to keep repeating that doesn't actually make TikTok unique. Uh, yeah. There are so many services, so many games you play, so many software applications you use, hardware that you buy that is also uh, more directly located in mainland China than ByteDance. So this is very much something personal against ByteDance and TikTok than it is anything endemic to the technology itself. Uh, the, the, yes, go ahead. Oh, I'm just going to say that, but uh, to me, the differentiator is that it's media. We live in a fractured media world and it is extraordinarily influential in a way that uh, uh, I think makes a lot of politicians really, really uncomfortable. And you, yeah. and you can take that from the security perspective or you can take that from the more sinister perspective that it's like, hey, we can't, we don't know who the CEO is to call if we're upset about something. They, I guess you can talk to the guy they don't, in they Singapore, don't know but we don't. Yeah, but yeah. we don't know whether or not he's really calling the shots. Uh, and, and yes, that's also true of Clash of Kings, uh, which is more popular or has been more popular and installed more times than TikTok. Uh, that it is, it is more pervasive and collects probably just as much data as TikTok, uh, with no safeguards on you. Uh, there's, there's so many games and apps and things that fit the exact definition of massive popularity media apps, but they don't have the mind share. And specifically they aren't competing with meta alphabet, et cetera. Uh, and, and I'm not saying that as a conspiracy theory, I'm saying no. that as meta very clearly is out there lobbying, like, yeah, you need to do something about TikTok <laughs> because it benefits meta's Facebook for something to be done about TikTok. It well, benefits meta's Instagram for something to be done about TikTok. Well, that's the other, the other thing that is odd about this is that normally when somebody is talking about government intervention into an industry, the arrest of the industry tends to be very prickly about it because they're like, wait a minute, if you can do it to them, you'll be able to do it to us. We want to stand up. We will lock arms and say, absolutely not. You shouldn't do this. But right now you've got, as you mentioned, Meta and and Google saying, uh, Ah, is somebody going to do something about these commies? Because, yeah, man, these right? commies are really, they're oh, running better, a shot. Better dead than red, am I right? <laughs> like, yeah. I and, and so I think it's less about it being media as about it being popular and having mind share. Uh, popularity gets it to a certain point. But as I pointed out, Clash of Kings and a lot of games are just as popular. They don't have the mind share. So TikTok is popular. It's hugely popular, like Facebook level popular. It has mind share in that people who don't use it know about it and know what it is and have fears about it. And when you have that combination, the fact that it's not American, unlike everything else that fits that definition, uh, puts it at a disadvantage. I do think that the news element, the media element is a huge part of it because you, as you said earlier, one of the things that has stuck in in terms of criticisms is the algorithm and that like, okay, 
look, if it taps too far into your phone and it is sending location data back, you're absolutely right. That happens with uh, theoretically other Chinese based or Chinese invested and in, American based. For uh, that uh, yeah. yeah, exactly. But uh, let's. For, for, for the sake of this conversation, we are defining all American spying as totally legit and any <laughs> yeah. Chinese spying Not is an issue. Yeah. very bad, right? Right. Uh, so if we are taking that, the only thing that is unique about it is, okay, well, after October 7th, all of a sudden, algorithmically, there is this gigantic spike of a lot of commentary about it. Uh, uh, that would be, let's say, disproportionate to the Saudi involvement in Yemen or something that would be another uh, 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 very bloody, uh, uh, you know, morally uh, 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 opinion having uh, uh, opinion uh, uh, inspiring opinion yeah. inspiring event. But the difference is, is that all of a sudden now there's a, a flood of content, which begets another flood of content and and TikTok can. Uh, you know, play that loop there. Yeah. Which that's certainly why yeah. the attention has gotten on it heated up because there, there's been uh, legislation moving through Congress for a couple of years now uh, about mm -hmm. TikTok and trying to restrict it or ban it or get it, force a sale. Uh, and it is only since uh, the, the Israeli Palestine situation that it is heated up enough again. And again, I, I don't think it, it all, all I think is that, that situation caused the momentum to pick back up again. Um, the other thing that I will point out, and this doesn't change the calculus about whether it gets banned or whether the Senate gets heated up against, because I think, I think you're right that if something happens or something appears to happen, it doesn't even have to yeah. happen. It just has to appear to happen convincingly. Uh, it could change the calculus, but for your own, you know, you, the listener personal, like, should I be worried? Uh, yes. About data brokers. Don't I, I am not worried about TikTok personally. It collects less data than a lot of other websites that you visit uh, and certainly other apps that you visit. And because it's got Project Texas, uh, it is harder for anyone to get at that data, including people in China. Again, not that they can't get at it, but it is much more difficult to get at it. If I'm the Chinese Communist Party and I want data on anyone in the United States, I'm not going to ByteDance and asking for it. I'm going to a data broker uh, because data brokers are out there with much more data about every single one of us uh, that you can get for cheap and easy. Uh, and that would be the way to go. So that's, it's another reason why I feel like the concerns about TikTok, while not entirely unjustified are out of proportion and the movement against it is more political and ideological than it is technological. Do you think ByteDance would ever sell TikTok or, or would they, or would they take this to, to a ban? So, uh, did you hear about, uh, former Activision CEO, Bobby Kotick, at a uh, dinner at the the Allen uh, and Company uh, uh, conference last week, okay. Sam Altman at the table, by the way, although uh -huh. we don't know what his reaction, did he choke on his uh, shrimp or not? <laughs> uh, Kodak said, you know, I think I want to put together an investment team. I, I've talked to ByteDance and told them that I'm interested. Who's with me? Uh, let's, let's make an offer. Let's buy this thing. So... It's already rustled up the community that might be interested in buying it. They won't yeah. have any problem finding someone who wants to buy it. Microsoft previously was interested in buying it the last time around when President Trump ordered it to be sold. When ByteDance got to the point, like any company would be, to be like, well, how much are we talking yeah. here? Yeah. China stepped in and said no. The government of China, the only time they've ever spoken on it was no, you're not you're not divesting the U.S. version of TikTok. So I imagine that ByteDance would run into problems operating in mainland China, which they don't operate TikTok in, TikTok in mainland China, by the way. They operate a, a version of it called yes. Duyan. Uh, they would run into problems there. And because of that, I think they would probably decide, no, we won't sell it. Uh, and, and so I don't think ByteDance sells it because of pressure from the Chinese government. Which therefore reinforces the issue of exactly how beholden to the Chinese government TikTok is. Yeah, but again, if a country says, you know, choose which country you want to do business in uh, and you say, OK, I'm incorporated here and I have a majority of my income coming from here, you're going to choose to do business in that country. They, they make a lot of money in the United States. Don't get me wrong, but they make more money in China and the Southeast Asian market. Uh, absolutely. Which is why 
it's curious that they're saying but no, that, you can't you can't sell you can't sell TikTok. Well, again, they're not saying you can't. They're saying you better not. Uh, and I think that's well, like now we're now we're 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 we're, we're splitting g hairs. Well, no, it's I'm only I'm only saying that there's not a, they have not passed a law the way the United States would pass a law. But they don't need to. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that doesn't. Uh, but also, I mean, the, that the, doesn't the, the, mean the, they're all they're looking at the 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 data of servers in in Texas on the Oracle servers either. No, I, I, I don't. And I, so I don't. I don't think it's particularly revelatory that China's government has a lot of influence on any business that does business in China. That's, no. that's going to be anything. But it is part of the difference that, you know, exists between the two countries. And it is it is sure. part of the the fertile ground for which suspicion grows, uh, especially if you want to say, OK, well, if, if, if this organization, which, again, like they don't need to say anything. Like this is this is a this is a a regime for which people just disappear and then eventually you you hear you next hear about them when they've apologized for something uh, uh, and you never really hear the crime like that mm -hmm. that is there's a tremendous amount of soft power uh, and there's not a lot of explanation so it's like if if they say no you can't then that is I mean I do think that that, that is part of this and I do, I do feel China's more saying it to the United States than saying it to ByteDance but you're right. They, yeah. they, they, they can influence any comp country, any company, including Apple that does business mm -hmm. in China. By, and do, in, and yeah. do, <laughs> you know, the question is by, by exactly what means, yeah. uh, 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 do they? So, yeah. So I think a, a sale unlikely unless somebody was able to, you know, uh, uh, pull, pull the deal of the century, but even then, you know, the people that would likely buy it. You know, I guess Microsoft's in a bit of a, a advantageous situation. They are they are now flush with more cash than they would uh, otherwise. They've had a huge ride over the last two years, but the major media players, I don't think it would it would uh, clear regulation. Uh, Google can't buy it. Meta can't buy it. Right. The theory is that OpenAI could benefit from investing in, in like a Codex style joint operation because they could train the data, so they might be willing to pitch in the money on it. I don't know how true that is, but that's the theory. Yeah. And who knows even, you know, the open AI reality financially is like, yeah, they're making a lot of money, but uh, the to keep that furnace hot, we're, we're talking like, you know, uh, 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 billions, billions and billions and billions. Yeah, uh, is being burned in that furnace. Oh, yeah, yeah. So I don't know exactly how much... Like, this is not a situation... OpenAI is not like Google or Facebook, which realized, oh, my God, there's a pure margin product called online advertising. Yeah. <laughs> like, well, we, we could just rake in a ton of money that comes in with, where we, we spend fractions of a penny to service that product. The other big question that I don't hear anyone discuss is how good is TikTok if it's sold by ByteDance? Because the magic sauce is the algorithm. And the reason that you had that January story about, hey, sometimes some of that code got leaked out somewhere else is because it's so difficult to take the algorithm developed by the ByteDance employees in Singapore and try to replicate it in a situation where... TikTok is still part of ByteDance. USDS is the company that's operating the Oracle servers. And yeah. with TikTok's cooperation, they're having a hard time keeping up and doing code reviews on the massive amount of code that's in the TikTok algorithm updates. Not even just in the algorithm itself, but the updates. Imagine if you're now a separate company and ByteDance is like, good luck. Hope you hope you have a great time. You don't have the expertise. You don't have the constant updates. You don't have the cooperation anymore. And it just, just isn't going to be the same product anymore. Well, theoretically. I mean, you know, it won't. No, it won't be. I mean, it's I guess it's not a, impossible for a company to replicate the success of the algorithm somehow. But it, it, it would be tough. It, it would be a tall order to do. And ByteDance would no longer be cooperating because if they were cooperating, it would be Project Texas, which has not been proven to be sufficient. Yeah. 
Yeah. I mean, I guess that would be exactly what are you buying when you buy yeah. TikTok? Because uh, remember, you... I think it's worth repeating. Project Texas isn't just like, well, store your data here and then all the people in China access it. Project Texas is a separate com company called USDS that operates the TikTok data, operates the TikTok algorithm on Oracle servers with a board of directors of the Committee on Foreign Investment in the United States. Like it is as, as separate as you can get without having TikTok sell. They they have agreed to as far as they can go operationally. Uh, so if you if that's not good enough, then it's going to be no communication between ByteDance and whatever would, would exist after that. Yeah, I mean, and also it, it's a hypothetical. It's really not even worth walking down the path. Because it's probably not going to Because they're never no. going to sell. They will never, ever, ever, ever sell. Yeah. The and, only, and then you end the, up like the, India. The only way... The only way this would ever happen is if it comes as part of like a trade deal sure. between the United States and China. That that might be the only situation that I could ever imagine China mm. saying like like Hey, let us import more steel, and we'll allow somebody to sure. buy TikTok." TikTok, uh, but then but then. It, it would be a distinction without a difference if they allow it to be sold and there's a connection because it's essentially what you've got now. Uh, but maybe that's enough to, to satisfy people and, and make it look like they did something. Because uh, the, the other option is India. India just banned TikTok. There was no, we're going to make you sell it. They just yeah. said, you're, 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 you're done. You don't operate. TikTok is not allowed to be distributed in India. Uh, and since that point, YouTube Shorts and Instagram Reels have, have taken up the slack. And that's the other difference between then and now, you know, from when Donald Trump toward the end of his administration in 2020 was was putting out these executive orders. And now reels and shorts have become successful like like these, these are these are knockoff products for sure. But that that version of vertical waterfall video has in many ways become the standard. There's a reason why I'm doing video right now. It's because the only place right. that you can find new listeners, new people are on this form. It's died everywhere else. Everywhere else is a closed silo effectively. Yeah. Uh, and, and really uh, it, it's, it's interesting to see TikTok started to get into a horizontal video. Uh, if left to its own devices, it's going to merge and try to be a YouTube style thing. We'll see if that if that takes off. Uh, but but yeah, uh, if if they ban TikTok, we just end up with with YouTube and Instagram Reels here, and I guess everybody moves to that. I thought one of the most interesting things about this particular scare is that the TikTok community didn't react. When they when President Trump signed the executive order saying they were going to ban yeah. TikTok, TikTok was filled with videos of people saying, well, if it happens, here's where I'll be. I've started my Reels account. You can find me here. Here's yeah. where I'll go. This time, nothing. Like people saying, do you think they'll really ban it? They, people reporting on the calls and all of that. But nobody panicking and telling telling their their listeners or their viewers where to find them. Yeah, I wonder if that's also just a cultural thing that we've been through so many of these drills. I think so. And, yeah. I mean, just on on Twitter alone, how many how many times have we had the <laughs> "find me here" posts where? Yeah. Uh, 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 you know, look, if somebody's leaving, they're leaving. But I mean, which I've always found to be a curious thing. It's like the person at the bar loudly proclaiming that they're leaving the bar, which usually means that they're staying at the bar so they can complain about how this bar is bad, but. Uh, uh, yeah, I don't know. Maybe, maybe we've just had, we've, we've reached a point of maturity with, with those conversations that we're yeah. not going to take them all that seriously. Or at least they're going to wait till there's actually, you know, a past law and the five month counter begins. I would say, yeah, if it leaves the house, uh, before our funding, uh, for the federal government for 2023, which would be really funny, uh, then it would be it would be interesting to see the reaction there because at that point, I think we're gonna get there's gonna be some some serious uh, uh, amateur vote counters on on the old TikTok. We are going to see people oh, yeah. get very granular in terms of uh, 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 which senators are on which side. And I don't know how much to make of this, but apparently there's no Senate version in the works. Uh, and normally, when you've got the chance of passage of a bill. Uh, especially one that's as widely supported as the one in the House, you've got something in the works in the Senate that the Senate will pass and then send to reconciliation. And 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 from what I read right now, there's no momentum on that in the Senate. 
uh, which they could still take the House bill and, and pass it and that that be that. But that's not ever how it works. Well, again, I agree with you. I don't think that the same fire burns in the Senate like it does in the House. But at the same time, they don't want to say that. They don't want to say they want it. They want to pound the, the the table and say China's bad. They want to pound the table and say that uh, uh, social media is killing teenage girls and that they, they want this. I mean, look, uh, uh, it was, I think, in part because of a really embarrassing moment uh, uh, recently with uh, Zuckerberg in front of uh, 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 the uh, Senate committee that like. Instagram has said and and threads have said, you know what? You know what? We're going to be take a lighter touch on political content. <laughs> we are we are going to to not push it in the same way that we might have otherwise. We are going to intentionally put restrictor plates on it because they're like, we want less to do with politics. In fact, we want to stick to vacation photos. We want to stick to dog photos. We got enough of an audience here that we can sell ads against. It's 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 fine. Yeah, you know what never got us hauled in front of Congress? Your lunch. Take a picture of that. <laughs> delicious. I never had to apologize to my lunch. Yeah. Like I had to apologize to activists <laughs> in the Senate because Josh Hawley was mad at me. Yeah. Uh, all right. Uh, Tom, Daily Tech News Show, uh, five days a week. Uh, uh, the best in the business, in my opinion. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Is there anything else? Oh, any any uh, 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 British uh, p- politics updates uh, while we have you? <laughs> oh, well, you know, there's the whole uh, royal family situation where uh, Princess... What is up with that? Yeah, the Princess of Wales... That's got a tech angle, tech it, angle. Monday's Daily Tech News Show, we dive into the technology of how Princess Catherine modified the photo of her and her children. It was Adobe Photoshop, uh, and we've got the details, dailytechnewsshow.com. What was it? Was it uh, the, the the new generative AI stuff within? No, no, Photoshop? it wasn't AI. It's it's it was simply the the short version is uh, it was a mom who who was like, you know, I've got five pictures and the kids all are making different faces in all of them. But if I stitch oh. these three together, I can make them all look like they were smiling at the same time. Do you really think she did it? That was yeah, the one thing. She's that actually fishy she's to actually me. an enthusiast. She's a photography enthusiast, really? and apparently this is normal. Uh, like they, they definitely just do this with their photos all the time. Uh, and so, yeah, she, she pulled out her copy of Photoshop on a Mac according to the really? data. Yeah. Huh? Well, look at that. Uh, Tom, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Justin. And that'll wrap it up for us today. Politics, 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 written and hosted by me, Justin Robert Young for dog and pony show audio in Austin, Texas. If you would like to thank the one, the only, the amazing, the magnificent Mr. Tom Merritt. You can go to letter P, letter X, number three, guest.com. Make sure that you buy his book, Synced, right now at tomsnewbook.com. Of course, you can follow, find, and share clips of this show on TikTok while it exists. Justin R. Young. Instagram is Justin R. Young. On YouTube, you can find this channel, Politics, Politics, Politics. On Twitter, it is PX3 Tweets. And my personal Twitter is Justin R. Young. And then you can find me live on Twitch, px3live.com. Send me an email, theyoungamerican at gmail.com. And you can share this podcast with your friends, family, and clergy. Letter P, letter X, number three, podcast.com. PayPal, if you want to give us a one-time donation, is paypal.me slash payjury, P-A-Y-J-U-R-Y. Venmo is justin-young-20. Cash app is px3cash. And you can send any checks in the mail. P.O. Box, 153184, Austin, Texas, 78715. Again, that is Post Office Box, 153184, Austin, Texas, 78715. You can always get our bonus content at TakePoliticsSeriously.com. That is a $3 tier. Get you two bonus podcasts per week covering all the news that we miss on our free podcasting schedule now in video version. Oh, yeah. And you get that and more with our $10 tier. You get everything we just said, plus your name right at the end of the show, like these fine folks in the Titanic. $10 $10 tier. Sam, John, Niemeister, Edwin, and Vogloria Young for King of the New World Order. 
Brian Edison, Jeremy, a dog named Trekker, Sarah Jeannie, Spider, Matthew, Dr. G, Dustin, Brad, D. Laser, Nick, just another pilot, Middle Age Mike, Utah, Jimmy, Montana, The Jen, Alo, D, really? Andrew, Lisa, Fat Tony's PJs from New York, Devon, the CFP, Gloria, Gray Zone, Peepaw, J, Neil, Yield, Pinball Shop, John, DP4, Bongo, Neil, his nerdiness, Charles, Audrey, Stole, Adler, Spot, Darren, Idris, Arzlanian, Berkeley, Stephen, Nomadic, Terran, Molly's Delightful Demeanor, Adam, Chief, Andy, Robert, Casey, and Paul. You want your name right on the show. One place to go, takepoliticsseriously.com. We're getting macabre, baby. We're getting morbid on the show Friday. I have done my best to avoid either in personal conversation or on this show one scenario in this election. One. And it's one that I get asked about constantly. One that I hear talked about constantly. What if one or both Donald Trump or Joseph Robinette Biden Jr. die between now and the election. I don't like talking about it, but we're going to talk about it for one episode only. What exactly would happen? What are the pathways? Mechanically, what would happen? And what I think would be the result from it. That and an interview about anxiety. So we're really getting in our feelings on Friday. Oh, yeah. We'll see you then. Till next time, this is your old pal Justin Robert Young saying, some shows talk about politics, others talk about politics, and still more discuss politics. But this, this is the show that only, this is the only show that talks about all three.